Let's look at three steps to solve immigration the Jesus way. You know, my father was an immigrant. He came here from Poland as a child. We lived in really poverty with no car, no vacations. My dad worked as a janitor. My disabled mother scrubbed floors on her knees three days a week. I start here because I have real compassion for immigrants and I support immigration, legal immigration. Many well-intentioned, but I believe misdirected individuals, and I respectfully include here presidents and presidential candidates, influential politicians, and even news commentators, they seem to believe the compassionate solution to the escalating border crisis is just extend our arms and declare, y'all come in. Guilt is projected on any of us who sincerely disagree and dare to say, you're missing it. You're not handling this the way Jesus would. So who's right? Well, let's take a look at this. Over four decades ago, I worked at the AFL-CIO headquarters, right across the street from the White House in DC. My job was in the community relations department, helping union members and families with humanitarian needs outside of the contract of a union. Early on, I discovered there are requirements and limitations to assistance that's being offered. You know, in Matthew 22, Jesus told a parable of a man desiring entrance to an event, but he was refused entrance because he didn't honor the requirements. In Matthew 25, Jesus told of 10 young maidens desiring to gain entrance to a special occasion, and yet five were turned away, called fools. Why? Because they didn't fulfill the requirements. Let me give you three steps to solve the crisis. Number one, we need to extend genuine love to all immigrants. You look in the Old Testament, immigrants were to be granted acceptance. You'll see in the chapter, the verses here, they were given opportunities to collect food and they were to be treated justly. This wasn't just some blanket entitlement because God required the immigrants to keep the laws of the land just like the native people. Number two, respect realistic limitations. If a lifeboat has a sign that says limit of 12, it can appear compassion and say, well, let's, let's put 25 in, but the result will be the drowning of everyone. Today, America faces 19 trillion in debt. Cities are going bankrupt or on the precipice of insolvency. The welfare system is exploding. We're stretched to the max in our emergency rooms, schools, healthcare, and social service agencies. We need limits. Number three, obey the government and its laws. It's unmistakable that the divine directive is for citizens obey governing authorities. You'll see the verses. The one exception is if government forces us to violate a law of God. Now be honest, what is your reaction when you've stood in line for 20, 30 minutes for a ticket, maybe a restaurant seat and someone just barges in, says, you know, give me it. You'd say, hey, hey, wait, excuse me, you need to wait in line like the rest of us. We must I say it again, build up and extend the long overdue border fences. Yes, walls and fences do work. Why else do we have them around the White House? How about Israel, China? They've relied on them for decades, centuries. The wall of China is 13,000 miles long, was built centuries before Jesus. It worked for them. When elitists who live in their gated communities tell us fences don't work, I ask them, well, then why do you have them? Let me say this, when the bathtub's overflowing, the first thing you do is turn off the water. You don't debate whether to use a rag or a mop. The number one priority is shut off the water. This is a pivotal time, and it's a defining moment in our history. We need a unified response here in America.